Richard, you you were in bands as a guitarist for years before you you stepped out in the limelight as as a solo artist. W what made you hesitate? Um, I was always happy playing guitar. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, it was never like I was desperate to do it. You know, but I've been writing songs since I was a kid, and you know, lead singers have like you have to have a huge ego, you know, to be a lead singer. And I, I was always a bit too shy, but. Um, it kind of got to a point in my life when I hit 30 years old, really. I just thought, if I don't do this, I'm going to get to 60 if I'm lucky, and I'll regret it, you know. So, um, and I, I never really thought that it would kind of sell any records, you know. So I didn't mind, you know. My shyness was all right, you know. How how is your ego today? Huge. <laughs> <laughs> no, is is um. It's not too bad, I hope not. You'd probably have to ask the rest of the band, you know, but I think, you know, I'm still trying to be a decent person, you know. But are you less shy? Yeah, definitely less shy, you know. Um, I like to have fun, you know, with the audience and not be too over-serious, you know, even though I've got sunglasses on today, that's because I've got flu. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, um, it's best not to take yourself too seriously in life, you know, I think. Were you always confident as a singer? Uh, I'd usually have to get a few drinks down me to sing, you know, in the local pub. or uh, And I'd, I'd sang backing vocals a lot, you know, but never in the middle of the stage, you know. Um, and uh, I quite enjoy it now, you know. I like singing. I, I, I sang from being a very little boy with my mother, you know. When she used to do the ironing of the clothes, I would sing, she would always sing then, and that's how I learned to sing harmonies, you know, with her. So do you like your own voice? Do you like the sound of it? Oh, it's a difficult question, that. It sounds OK, yeah, I think, you know. Um, I quite like deep voices, and... Uh, uh, if, if I say yes, it means I've got a big ego. <laughs> it doesn't sound awful, you know. So that's a good thing. To me, your your, your music strikes me as very classical or timeless, maybe even. Do, do you think in those terms when you make it the music? No, you just write it. You know, it, it comes um, naturally somewhere in the back of my mind. You know, um, I usually write songs when uh, I'm distracted, doing something else. Uh, I wrote a song on the last album, Cole's Corner, when I was pushing my sons on the swing. And I had to get them out of it and put them in the pram and run up the road really quickly. So, because when you get an idea for a song, it's like holding onto water in your hands. You know, it's very difficult to remember sometimes. Yeah. Where do the the emotions in your music come from? Uh, my broken heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, just feelings, you know, that you have as a, most human beings, I would imagine go through those emotions sometime in their life, you know. Uh, it's kind of, you know, a lot of the time I'm quite happy, believe it or not, as a person, but it's when you're feeling not so great that you write songs, you know, because happy songs are usually crap, <laughs> you know. And, uh, yeah, so I don't write songs when I'm happy. So... so do you, do you struggle to get in that mode of songwriting? Or? No. It's, it all comes very naturally, you know. And what I, I tend to write songs in shorthand, you know, is I'll tape a little bit, a fragment of an idea, and I'll, I'll never finish something off until it's time to record it, and then I, I finish it off very quickly. And uh, uh, I just need to listen to the tape and go, oh, yeah, that song. And, uh, and then I make it into longhand, you know, and finish it off. But it's never a struggle. Um, if you struggle with a song, it usually means it's not very good. <laughs> you know, if they come easy to you, um, they're always the best ones that come really quickly. You know. Reading about about you in almost every review and every article, uh, they always talk about Sheffield, your hometown, and how that is a big part of your music. Um, how would you describe? Sheffield's place in, in your music? Um, I don't know what it's like to live in Stockholm or New York or, you know, Oslo. I know what it's like to live in Sheffield. So I use the city 
is a metaphor a lot of the time, is a backdrop to the emotions or the situations in the songs. And I think if I wrote about living in Oslo or Stockholm, I would be a liar. And writing about... I, it's not a colloquial thing, do you understand? It's not like I write things that exclude the rest of the world. You know, I want to, the emotions expressed in the songs to communicate with everyone. But um, it's because Sheffield is my home. Simple as that, really. It's not very complicated, you know. Um, and I don't know what it's like to live anywhere else. What, what is your relationship to, to your hometown, then? Is, is it a happy one or is it a complicated one? No, it's a good relationship, you know. I mean, I, I, I love the city, you know. I, I, I've chose to spend the rest of my life there. That's what I want to do and raise my family and um, for them to have a sense of roots, you know, because my family have lived there for nearly 200 years and I feel very closely and deeply connected to the city, you know. And um, it's not the most glamorous of places, you know, at all, really. But it, it, it is a very green city. It's very... Um, there's lots of parks, you know, and there's five rivers there as well that all converge at one point, which is why they've made steel there, you know. Um, but I find it a really romantic place, and uh, I always have, you know. Um, you, you've named the new record of Ladies' Bridge, and that is a, a bridge yeah. over one of these streams in Sheffield. W what does it look like at the Ladies' Bridge? Um... It, it's like a, an old Victorian bridge, you know, but it, it's a metaphor, what it means. is It used to connect the poor part with the rich part of the, the city. But And also, this year I lost my father, you know, during the making of the record. And we used to cross that bridge a lot. It's kind of, and this bridge you won't cross with me, do you understand what I mean? And uh, it's, it's the metaphor of that, you know, that I use and... Uh, it's a positive thing, I hope, because in life things happen, you know, bad things, and you have to kind of uh, get over that, you know, and don't carry baggage around with you. It's about leaving things on one side of the river and crossing over to the other side and not taking all the baggage with you is what it kind of means. Have you managed to do that? I'm not getting there, I think, yeah. You know, it's important to do that. And also, you know, I, I got to... The, the miracle of me making 40 this year, you know, is is, uh, is something I never quite thought I'd ever make, you know. Why? Um, you know, I've parted quite a lot in my life over the years and quite excessively, and I, I don't know when that... You, you kind of worry, as you get older, you think, mm, maybe I shouldn't have done that <laughs> so much when I was younger, and uh, that there might be the ferryman to pay, you know, there might be some damage, but I think I'm, you know, okay. <laughs> it hasn't come back to want you yet. Not yet, not yet, yeah, but, you know, give it time. Yeah. Do you enjoy getting older? Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of, when, I, when I'm, I got to be 30 years old, it was, it was shit, you know, but now I'm 40, it's kind of like, great, thank God for that, you know, and I think... You, a lot of things that you think are important when you're kind of 23, you realise they're not really, you know. What, what kinds of things? I don't know. What people think about you, you know, are you popular, do people like you? And then you just, like, get older and you think, oh, I just don't give a shit what you think. <laughs> do you know what I mean? At all, really. So.